This is uh, MathHeals.com, where you can find more links to math and computer science uh, YouTube videos. Let's take a look at uh, differentials. And take a look at our first problem here. Differentials are used to uh, approximate, which we'll see as our last example. Um, well, that's one of the, one of the purposes. Um, this one says find total differential. Z is equal to 3x to the fifth, y squared. And our formula for a total differential is dz is equal to the partial respect to x um, times dx plus partial respect to y times dy. So write down that formula. So partial respect to x times dx plus the partial respect to y times dy. Now it's pretty straightforward. Uh, partial respect to x and then you multiply it times dx. Respect to y and then you multiply it times dy. The variables match. Okay. Well, if I take the uh, partial with respect to x of uh, this, the, again we treat the 3 and the y squared like the constant, so they just stay there, and we just take the derivative of the x of the fifth. So we'll have uh, our 3y squared times, and then derivative of x of the fifth is 5x to the fourth dx. Plus, then the partial respect to y, again we treat the 3 and the x of the fifth as a constant, so they just stay. And then we take the derivative of the y, which gives us 2y. And then put dy on. So that gives us 15x to the fourth y squared dx. 3 times 2 gives us 6x to the fifth y dy. And that's our answer. Let's take a look at this one. Z is equal to y tangent x <coughs> minus x cosine y. And I want to find total differential. So same same formula. Well, um, write down my formula. So partial respect to x times dx plus partial respect to y times dy. Okay, so let's take derivative of this, uh, partial derivative of this with respect to x. The y is just a constant, stays out in front. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. So this will be y secant squared x. And over here, um, the cosine y is just a constant, so that just stays out in front, and then derivative of x is 1. So this becomes minus cosine y dx plus, and then we'll take the derivative, the partial respect to y. Well, uh, tangent x is just a constant, so it stays out in front. The derivative of y is 1, so this just becomes tangent x. And over here, um, taken with respect to y, so the x is just a, like a constant out in front. And derivative of cosine is negative sine. And we already have a negative out in front, so a negative and negative becomes a positive. X sine Y DY. And that's our answer. <coughs> okay. Let's look at our third problem. Z is equal to E to the 3x squared minus 2x plus 5 secant y. And same, same instructions. So dz, we're going to take the partial respect to x. Secant y is just constant, so it stays out in front. The derivative of e to a power is e to the power. That doesn't change. 
But since it's more than just a single x up here, you have to multiply it times the derivative of what's inside the parentheses, or inside the exponents, sorry, which would give us 6x minus 2. And then my secant y remains dx plus, and then we'll take the partial respect to y. Well, let's e uh, to the 3x squared minus 2x plus 5 just remains. That's like a constant now. That's how we're treating it. And root of secant is secant tangent. So this becomes secant y tangent y dy. Now, we could uh, factor out what they have in common. I don't know if the book does that or not. Uh, they both have an e to the 3x squared minus 2x plus 5. And they both have a secant y. So, pull that out too. Personally, I'd like to leave it this form because then the dx is all in one grouping, the dy is all in one grouping. Uh, this is gone, this is gone. We've got 6x minus 2. dx. Then that, that's gone, that's gone, so we got tangent y dy. Like I say, I like, I personally like this answer right here. Okay, number four. given f of uh, xy is equal to x to the third minus 7y squared. Uh, it says evaluate f of uh, 3, 1. So let's do that first. So we're plugging 3 in for the x, 1 in for the y. So we've got 3 to the 3rd minus 7 times 1 squared. Uh, three, t 3 to the 3rd is 27 minus 7 gives us 20. And then f of um, 3.1, 1.05. Plug uh, 3.1 in for the x, 1.05 in for the y. So we've got um, 3.1 to the 3rd minus 7 times 1.05 squared. And I'm going to plug that in my calculator. 3.1 to the third minus 7 times 1.05 squared. 3.1 to the third minus 7 times Okay. So then it gives us 22.0735. And, um, the uh, after they calculate those, they tell us to calculate uh, delta z, the change in z, and this is using just basic algebra. So we're going to take f of 3.1, 1.05 minus f of 3, 1, which gives us 22.0735 minus 20, which should give us 2.0735. And um, this first part, find these and then calculate that. Assuming I typed everything in correctly in my calculator. Okay, then it says use a total differential dz to approximate uh, delta z. So um, instead of using algebra, we're going to um, use our calculus. So again, remember our calculus, we take partial of this respect to x. That would become uh, 3x squared. Now, the negative 7y squared drops away because we consider it a um, constant. And then we add on our dx. Plus, and um, then we take the partial with the, this respect to y. The x to the third drops away, and this becomes negative 14y. Then we put on our dy. Now the x and y we're going to be putting in is our beginning one, the 3 and 1. So we're going to have uh, 3 times 
3 squared times dx. This is a change in x um, from 3 to 3.1, which was 0 0.1, plus negative 14 times y. y was um, 1. Then the change in y. It went from 1 to 1 1.05, so that's 0.05. Um, let me use my calculator because I'm not very good with decimals. Very side of them kind of causes me to screw screw up problems. Okay, that's two two point seven. And uh, the negative fourteen times point oh five. minus 0.7 and uh, if I subtract those that should give us 2 assuming I didn't make any basic math errors so again we use we use calculus to do that um, and in algebra up above here and you can see the um, the approximate change is you know about about the same it's not won't come out perfect um, save that And let's look at our last problem. I didn't show this uh, problem in class because uh, I um, I didn't I wasn't sure if I could actually make up a good problem um, by myself. And this one isn't a great one, um, but it'll give you the idea of um, how you can use this to help you figure out the maximum possible area. Okay, a triangle is measured and the base is 20, and the height is 7. These are inches I should put down. Okay, possible errors of measurement are one eighth inch. Whatever device we have uh, has this this possibility of error. Uh, it's not that precise of a measure. Uh, for the base and height, approximate the maximum possible error in the computation of the area. Well, our area is one half times base times height. So you can have any any formula here. Now, our, um, when we when we figure out the um, the di for differential, dA is going to equal to the partial of A with respect to our first variable, which is B, times dB, plus the partial of A with respect to our second variable, H, times dH. Again, whatever whatever we're taking partial with respect here, we always put D and then that variable here. If I had a third variable, I'd put another one. Okay. Partial of A with respect to B, well, the one half and H are constants, uh, so they just stay. And derivative of B is one, so I drops away. So we've got one half H DB. Plus, then the partial of A with respect to H. Again, the one half and b are both constants. We treat them as such, so they uh, stay out in front. And derivative of h is one, so I drops away, and then we put on our our dh. Okay, so that's um right there. If we plug in what we're what we're given, height they tell us seven inches, and um, then the possibility um, the approximate error is at one eighth inch. Now this could be one eighth inch uh, less or one eighth inch greater than. So really, what we got here is we got a plus or minus one eighth inch plus one half times b, which is twenty inches, times the uh, the, ch the possible error, which is um, plus or minus one eighth inch again. Well, we got inches times inches, that gives us inches squared. Um, and this gives us 7 halves times 1 eighth, 
me see what that is. Uh, seven halves times one eighth. And it gives us, and of course this is plus or minus. And you can have the plus or minus just clear out in front and then just deal with the numbers. So I'll have point four three seven five. It's probably the easiest way to think of it. Inches squared. I took one half times seven to seven halves and then times one eighth. Over on this side, we got one half times twenty, which is ten. And we got ten times one eighth. Which gives us one point two five inches squared. When you add those two together, us, one, four, three, seven, five, we get one pl plus or minus 1.69 inches squared. That's our, our um, maximum possible error in a computation area. Now we might, might um, get lucky, and when we, when we measured this, it actually is 20 inches. Um, but maybe we got some kind of measure that isn't isn't perfect or we're eyeballing it and you know eyeballing it you're gonna have error so this tells you your maximum maximum error you save that there we go and we're done that section so we're gonna stop the recorders